Hey guys, welcome to another Hobby Link Japan sponsored Scale Model Addict inbox review. Uh, this time around, Hobby Link Japan has sent me the Bronco M24 Chaffee. Uh, this kit has been on many modelers' want lists for a long time. Previously, I think it was only available either in resin or Italeri made one, I believe. Um, anyone who's been into armor models for a long time recognizes the uh, old dragon figures, which is a cool little inclusion, but we'll look into that a little more later. So let's just get right into the box and see what we got inside. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to take a look at here is the instruction sheet. Um, it has the same box art as the, well, box, naturally. Um, and much like my earlier review of the armored car, you can see 26 pages. And this is a pretty in-depth, you know, instruction book. Lots of painting uh, guides, even for the figures. The instructions themselves are your typical exploded line views. This one here shows you uh, how to bend the photo etch light guards. It even comes with these little pattern makers. It's, it's a plastic piece supplied on the sprue to aid you in bending the correct shape from the photo etch. I've noticed this in a few kits lately and I think it's really great because, you know, bending the photo etch to the exact shape can often be a little intimidating. The other great thing is you're also offered plastic version of the parts. So you're not forced to use the photo etch in this case if you don't want to. Um, a lot of times you can just take your knife and thin these out a little bit and they, and they do the job. Really nothing uh, that I can see in these instructions when I looked through them earlier in the way of mistakes or anything and uh, things like that will actually be pointed out or figured out I should say by me as I build the kit. Looks like a quite a there's quite a bit of photo etch in this kit although the sprue isn't huge there's enough to really get some nice super detailed uh, areas the screens are you know, really great to have them photo etch. Back in the day, you used to have to purchase those separately, but there's a shot of this photo etched fret itself, and the decal sheet. It even looks like it comes with some stowage items. Um, many photos I've looked at of the M24 has a lot of stowage on them. Uh, the other neat little thing about the photo etch sheet, and I'm not sure I will use it because photo etch is really flat, but it gives you the casting marks and numbers that you might find on casted pieces on the kit. I may choose a different medium, but it's, it's great that Bronco includes them in there for you. Um, here's the actual decal sheet and photo etch. This is I mean, I'm not a huge fan of photo etch, but this is really a decent sized sheet. The screens, you know, are definitely a must have. And pieces like this, this is for the sand shield, attachment points, and wing nuts. These are simple enough to use. You just clip them off, clean them up, and glue them on. The parts that I'm not huge fans of is the ones like the uh, ammo box cradle with lots of bends. Um, but you can see the engraved lines that make the bending easier. So. That's not bad, and guys that like Photo Etch is going to love that this comes with it. So kudos to them for including it. Looks like we've got some string for the tow cable. You can source that differently. The uh, 50 cal is pretty awesome, though. I've got to point that out because the cooling jacket is actually hollow. So when you slide the barrel in, you can see all the airspace around it. I mean, that's uh, pretty ingenious, really, because the largest uh, gripe that I've seen about... 50 cals is that this whole area just looks uh, flat and rather boring and unrealistic on most other 50 cals. Here's the decal sheet. Has markings for uh, a couple vehicles. Looks like 4th armored, 1st armored, 8th armored maybe. I'm not really sure. 
but uh, that is all pointed out in the instructions. Um, these look like they were made by slide mold technology and they are very very thin and very detailed and I gotta say that these are pretty impressive a little bit of an ejecta pin mark here um, you might not be able to see it through the plastic bag but nothing that's really a lot of trouble it's on a raised surface you just simply gotta sand it away and I think these are really cool um, this is I'm going to guess because there's only one it might be the recoil spring for the gun whether or not it is needed or just kind of one of those gimmicky things where you can have a recoiling gun we'll find out as we build the kit this is also pretty neat um, it's the tools but it also looks like you've got some kind of a milk container here and maybe that's the lid for the milk container you've also got the 30 cal on here and I'm not exactly sure what that is that might be the bot yes that looks like the bottom of the milk container so you could actually uh, because the milk container is hollow you could actually have the cap off of it and you could see inside if you wanted to actually put some kind of fluid in there tools look pretty detailed and sharp and crisp and last bagged item I have here is the clear parts um, these are your periscopes which look to have some really nice detail on them these look like the headlight lenses and this might be cupola windows I'm not really sure and this looks like the foul weather hood for the driver which is an option on this kit and I think that's pretty cool you don't often see them in period photos but you do occasionally um, this sprue is the old dragon figure sprue um, it's been included in a few or at least one dragon Sherman kit and for its day it's really not a bad figure kit I mean I've got a couple of them and I've used a few of the figures um, they're pretty generic the my favorite part is this here uh, the grease gun um, the stock is a little thick you might be able to replace that with wire if you're that picky but you don't find too many grease guns in plastic and to be honest with you I've actually uh, bought this kit on sale once simply because I wanted the grease gun um, They're neat weapons something a tanker would probably use because of its compact size And it even has a microphone here, which is another thing you don't find often So if you want figures uh, For your for your m24 you've got a bunch to choose from and that's not a bad idea to include them Let's get into the kit sprues uh, This looks like accessories these appear to be your ammo cans they all look like 50 caliber ammunition cans do the size these are the tops and the bottoms and these are the sides and these are the box ends so we're talking one two three four five six pieces per box it's not a simple box to make but that gives you the option of maybe posing it open with uh, some bullets hanging out etc stuff like that here's some gear few uh, musette bags or backpacks if you will some kind of a bag and then a roll up tarp it's nice for them to include it they're hollow on the back side so you'll definitely have to mount them onto the tank somehow to hide that um, some guys like to trim off these parts and replace with like lead foil or tape or something to have a more natural hanging appearance the tracks I really like the way they did this the tracks themselves the links themselves look pretty well detailed I gotta say and what I like is just it's just this little sprue piece in between each one now you're still gonna have to clean up mold seams and all that but to me this is just so much easier to deal with than a large sprue with all the links on it and things like that I'm guessing this has something to do with the ability to mold this link without ejecta pin marks on the surface because the ejecta pins are here and here and I think that's a pretty ingenious way of doing it and uh, I'll let you know how these go together when it comes time to build it you got a bunch of those and I won't show you all of them but they're all pretty much the same the lower tub okay that's the bottom of it pretty detailed the side as well um, I'm flashing this here in the light like this because this is one of the best way to find things like sink marks 
And while I do see some lines here, which I can only assume is as the plas liquid plastic is pumped into the mold, these are the lines. It's kind of like when in construction when we're pouring concrete, you may see these lines when you pull the forms. But I don't see any sinkholes. I don't see any short shots. This looks like a, a really good detailed lower hull. Um, and you can see some large ejector pin marks here, um, which would need to be cleaned up if you want to show the interior of this. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to. It's a small tank and it would be hard to see a lot through the hatches, so you may be able to hide some of that uh, with weathering or stowed gear or figures. But the very, very slight little bit of sanding, you should be able to take care of that. No problem. Um, another sprue. Looks like D, capital D, lowercase a. This appears to be the front portion of the hull and perhaps the rear. This might be the bottom and this might be the top of the front hull, actually. Um, these look like hatches. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what these are might have to do with the interior like the torsion bars go through here so this uh, might go along the floor of the hull we just looked at these look like stowage boxes of some sort with hinge detail and latch detail and I mean the detail looks pretty crisp um, I don't see any major flash you know on some of these more delicate parts you may get a little flash in there but nothing that we really as modelers you know aren't accustomed to already there looks to be some very delicate uh, casting marks and numbers of something on there I'll know better once I get into the kit it's hard for me to look around the camera at this point that looks like a siren or a horn you, you could call it it's, it's got some really nice detail on it um, another sprue here is a combination capital G low case B and capital G lowercase a and capital G lowercase e so it's three actual separate sprues which will be called out in the instructions and they're all attached by these small pieces of runner here and here this one has the uh, jerry cans if you will and they are multi-part I'm not sure if I've ever built a Bronco jerry can yet um, I like how the top is separate and the front and the back go together this way you don't have that seam that is normally located right here in the in the jerry cans that are two halves to go together I really like that um, and of course the handles and the caps and then here we have part of the cap this is what you lift to open it so I think this is really really nice how this and this are molded separately most uh, jerry cans that's all one piece and it's flat and unrealistic really this looks like you may be able to mold this in the open position and uh, could really bring some extra little details here we have some more ammo cans some 50 cal and some 30 cal however these are one piece due to the slide mold technology they did manage to get the handles in there and all but the bottoms are hollow so this would mean they'd have to be positioned flat on the ground but if you don't feel like building uh, those multi-piece ammo cans you've got some options here and that's kinda cool this looks like suspension and idlers and such there's some very delicate parts here care will be needed to pull them off the sprue um, and here's your sprocket pieces which have some nice bolt detail on the side and I'm going to assume, because I only see one of these, I'm going to assume this sprue is either repeated or that other side is found on another sprue. I'll find out as I go. Okay, on this one we have the, the upper hull, at least part of it, um, and I like how you've got the, the little teeth here for the gear for the tra traversing of the turret. In case you wanted to model like a blown up uh, tank, you've got this detail in here. You don't have to make it. These are the fenders, or the mud guards as some call it, and the sand shields. 
Um, a lot of pictures don't have the sand shields, but it's a cool option to have. And you can also maybe on these seam lines, you can cut this out and only put like a part of the sand shield on, drill out the bolt holes so it looks like some of the sand shield was tore off and some was left behind. This, this looks like part of the fender sand shield combination as well. And it's molded separately so you got some awesome detail on it. Um, again, I don't see any major sink marks. There are ejecta pin marks, but these are on the inside lower hull. I really don't think you could see in there unless you took a dental mirror and went in under like this. And this looks to be part of the driver's foul weather little windshield, which is cool. It's got the wiper on it and everything. Uh, this is Sprue F, and it has a lot of delicate detail parts on it. Looks like this is all part of the gun, the main gun, as well as they have a 30 cal here. Um, and there's a ammo box with ammunition in it. But it looks like a lot of this has to do with the main gun. And these parts are going to need care in cleanup and removal. And that's the antenna base, which, you know, one thing I notice is these two small attachment points here for the wire. A lot of antenna bases uh, made by other manufacturers miss that. Congrats to Bronco for actually including that. That's a neat detail. If you want to drill those out with a pin vise and put a wire there, that's a good option for some added extra detail that might make your build stand out. Again, we've already covered these, but as I dig through the box, they become available. You can see the track sprues. Again, I really like how they do them. They're very detailed. And let's see. There are one, two, three, four, five of these. These are obviously the road wheels. They're a multi-part assembly, two halves, and then two halves of the tire. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they go together. I haven't looked at the instructions that deep, but it looks like you could do some real tricky stuff. Again, if you were going to do a blown up or disabled tank, this might allow you some freedom in making a, a disabled road wheel or something. And as I said, there are five of those in the kit. Um, next, we have the repeat of the earlier sprue. So, like I thought with these parts, here's the other side. So this means you have twice as many of these fuel cans, which is really great because, you know, you may not use them all on this build, but then you've got a whole bunch of them for other builds, which is something I really like. Um, and again, you've got more of these uh, already assembled, so to speak, ammunition cans. So you've got 650 cal and 630 cal if you want to just use these instead of the multi-part assembly versions and lastly and I waited for the sprue for the end on purpose and I'll get to that in a second this is basically the turret sprue um, we've got the cupola here lots of little detail on that and this is the hatch ring that goes on the top so there must be a centerpiece to the hatch somewhere and that looks like it right there here's your mantlet it's nice casting marks right there, a little bit of a casting texture to it. Um, here's your radios. Uh, this looks like it might be a battery. Um, another antenna mount base here. This one doesn't have those attachment points, so you have a choice on which one to use. And I do believe that that's actual, uh, actually accurate. I think there is a version where the wire went in the bottom of the base, so it's nice that they give you both. Um, more of the turret ring and some of the mantlet here. This box that's on the back, some nice latch detail, and it looks like the top has got some hinge detail. Perhaps you can position it open and have some gear in there. Lastly is the turret. Now, I saved this for last on purpose because when this kit was first announced in the early uh, versions of the photographs were posted on the internet um, there was a forum I believe it was Armorama where uh, someone pointed out a discrepancy here if 
from the model to the uh, real tank. And it's not that big of a problem to most, but to the guy who wants a super accurate model and, uh, you know, wants to be able to model a certain vehicle, it's good that this was pointed out by some. There's a weld line that you can see that goes straight across here. And there's also a pitch to the turret on that weld line. The problem is, on the real uh, M24 turret, I think only this piece was welded in. This weld line should not go all the way across. It should stop over here. And this bend should be forward more, a little bit forward of this and this out here. So in Bronco's defense, after they saw that post, they made a new turret. And this one, which I just picked up at the hobby store, um, this I just found this at a local hobby store. Now you can see the bend is out front of this it doesn't run through that and through the circle the bend is actually out to the front and the weld only goes from here to here so you know for two dollars and fifty cents for the guy that wants a super accurate model and if that's the only problem with the model you know you've got to give it up to Bronco a lot of respect for them to do this you got to think how many models out there have these small inaccuracies and then they never do anything and the model has to take it upon himself to fix so really it's uh, personally i think that's really great that bronco did that but um that's just an aside so you can see i believe that the newer chaffee as well as the british version of the chaffee don't come with this mistake turret they come with the new turret and I'm not sure if there's a way to tell on the box but obviously this is the initial kit okay so that's a look inside the box um, it's a real detailed kit it's not gonna be a quick simple build but uh, it's gonna be a fun one it's gonna produce a beautiful model in the end so thanks again to Hobby Link Japan as well as Scale Model Attic for making this possible and uh, I'll see you on the forum